empty, void, nothingness. Echo, echo, echo. I'm of course talking about the atom. You may remember pictures of atoms in your physics books with the atom being comprised of a dense nucleus of neutrons and protons and orbited by less dense electrons. These, however, weren't drawn quite to scale. If the nucleus was scaled up to the size of a small olive, the rest of the atom with flea-sized electrons zooming about would be roughly the size of a football stadium. But being the nucleus, the olive would be thousands of times heavier than the stadium. And just like a tiny olive in a massive football stadium, the atom is 99.999% empty space. Again, really not to scale. To put it another way, if you removed all the empty space out of all the atoms in the Earth, the entire planet would fit in the palm of your hand but still weigh 6,000 billion billion kilograms. But if everything is made of atoms, and atoms are just empty space, why do things feel solid like this piece of cake? Mmm, squishy. And why don't things pass through other things, like flour through a sieve? Solidity is in fact an illusion, and we can never actually touch anything. Rather, being negatively charged, electrons on my finger and the cake repel each other like two opposing magnets, creating the sensation of touch. Mmm, science never felt so good. Another interesting facet of the electron is that it is both a particle and a wave. And what does this mean physically? Well, it means that electrons don't exist at a particular point in space at any point in time. Like a random variable in mathematics which occupies different values with different probabilities, so too does the electron exist in space in a number of points with different probabilities. In fact, it's best not to think of an electron as a small lump of mass at all, but rather as a fuzzy cloud. The thicker the cloud, the more likely it is that we'll find the electron there when we look at it. In fact, the electron only occupies a point in space when we observe it. Not looking, looking, not looking, looking, not looking, looking. While we humans die, no one knows what the use by date of the atom is. It has been suggested that it is probably around 10 to the power of 35 years. And if ever there was a competition for recycling, the atom would win hands down. The atoms that made up this chicken, these plants, you and me, have almost certainly come from stars and planets somewhere out there, and have probably helped make up millions of organisms on their journeys to becoming what they are today. In fact, a billion atoms in each of us probably once belonged to Shakespeare, another billion to Galileo, and another billion to Bill Gates. But wait, you proclaim with confusion. Isn't Bill Gates still alive? Well, yes, the Microsoft Prince is indeed still alive. You could very well be part Bill Gates. You see, every seven years, all of the atoms in your body will have been replaced with new ones. That means that while you may be 12, 28, 49, or 73 years old, seven years ago, you did not exist. So now, realizing that we are just a brain of atoms thinking about atoms, and that atoms are mainly empty space, and that in this empty space, the things that do exist, they don't exist in ways that we are familiar with, and that these things that kind of exist are constantly swapping with other things that kind of exist, I can therefore safely proclaim that I no longer think therefore I am, but rather I think therefore I am not.